Wow, it's really smoky today. It's been like this for about a week. This is from the BC forest fires. So the visibility is kind of crappy right now. We got canola over here, miles of canola, and some corn over here. Check this out. It's a leech, and it's a big one. It's about, I don't know, eight inches long. No swimming. Yeah. All right, guys, the wind's picking up here. Hopefully you can hear me okay. Uh, I'm gonna go over a couple things today. I thought about it not long ago. Um, what I do and you know how I use uh, bear protection, bear spray, bear bangers, and shotguns, rifles, whatever. Um, I'm a little bit different than a lot of you, possibly. I don't know. I'm in Canada, so you know our, our gun laws are a little bit different. We cannot carry a handgun uh, in the woods, but you know what? We have other alternatives, and I've kind of used um, I've used the rifle for uh, protection. You know, while fly fishing, of course, where it's legal, and I've used bear spray, I've used all kinds of stuff, and I've kind of come to a conclusion what I what I usually do, and I just kind of wanted to go um, through that with you and how I, uh, you know, there's pros and cons to everything, but I just want kind of want to go through uh, my thoughts on this stuff. We've had a few fatalities here um, not long ago; uh, they were a couple weeks apart, two different people, two different bears, and it does happen. Uh, there was one down, I believe, in Montana. Uh, and you know what, it does happen and you need to be aware of it and, and not everybody has to deal with it. Of course, if you're out east, you're not gonna run into a grizzly bear. But um, I have deal, dealt with it. I've got buddies that are uh, way more experienced than I am as far as bow hunting and having grizzly bear run-ins. But again, this is what I do and how I've kind of come to this conclusion of how I do it and why I do it. You know, there's a lot of different situations that can mess you up. A couple years ago, a guy, uh, a very experienced hunter, hunting sheep, he's been doing it for years, lots of grizzly bear run-ins. I mean, they're not like a, uh, you know, a uncommon thing to run into a grizzly bear. It's not like a fluke. You see them all the time, they're out there. This guy was hunting sheep. He had his rifle on over his shoulder, I'm assuming and his pack on and he came across a grizzly bear and uh, you know a sow and her cub on a kill and the bear killed the guy. Um, they found his pack over there, his gun over there. Um, it was not a good story. So you know my conclusion you know thinking when I'm fly fishing or whatever when I think of that I go out you know what How, do you have time to pull that out? Again if you're in the foothills and you can see for days like where, where I am now yeah, that's a different, it's a different deal. But if you're in the bush or when I'm fly fishing and there's only the sounds of you know, running water and I'm in the bush, thick bush, in my opinion, you're not gonna get that rifle off your shoulder. I've carried it in a scabbard as well. And I'll just kind of go through them here with you now and uh, we'll, see, we'll see where this ends up. All right, guys, let's take a look at the first thing here, I guess, um, bear spray. I've I use bear spray all the time. Oh, I don't use it all the time. I carry it all the time and I have practice with bear spray. And this is a little can. This is too small. I will keep these around camp or whatever just to have a few is a good idea. This is kind of the size I, I use now. Um, and I'll tell you why in a second. So those are the two different sizes. Again, there obviously there's obvious difference there. This guy holds a lot more. The thing is with bear spray and this um, comes from living in these parts and this part of the world when you're here like today the wind is blowing it's not always blowing um, hard but a lot of times it's blowing uh, a good friend of mine an amazing bow hunter um, compound bow recurve uh, and traditional bow hunter he told me the story that they were pretty much chased for about 700 yards kind of undulating hills through the through the rocky mountains and they had their bear spray, of course, and they had their bows. And again, if you're traveling light and you're, you know, if you're hiking for days, and I'm, I'm serious, I mean, you're hiking, you're not just getting on the car and running around, you're hiking, you know, four or five, six hours in up a mountain, you don't want to carry seven, eight pounds, nine pounds of gun when you have your gear, you're going to stay the night, blah, blah, blah. You want to keep it as light as possible. Of course, they had their bear spray, but he said the wind was about 60 miles an hour and it was just blowing like crazy. Uh, and it was kind of all over the place. The bear was coming, as far as they were concerned, they were toast. Everything turned out okay, but the only thing that went through his mind was this bear spray is gonna be absolutely useless unless I 
get around and get the wind exactly right that I can unload this thing in this grizzly's face. So, you know, when you're using bear spray, there's the wind is a huge factor. And I don't know if you've thought about it before, but I'm, I'm going to throw this out there now. So that's the deal with bear spray. I think they're awesome. And I've, again, I've, I've kind of gone back and forth over the years and how I deal with this stuff. Um, and I'll tell you what the difference is here. In my opinion, this is just my opinion. With the bear spray, you know, a bear could give you a bluff charge. Okay. So if you got the bear spray and you happen to be carrying, and again, we can't carry sidearms here. Uh, and I'll carry a 4570. I'll also carry 12 gauge with slugs. Uh, shorties, we can use real short shotguns here in Canada. Unlike you guys in the States, we can get real short here. So that's kind of handy. But unlike the gun, if you guys get going and this bear's just bluff charging you for whatever reason, you've screwed up, somehow this has happened, it happens. And you take a poke at it with a rifle. And of course, you've got to be in an area where you can blast something with a rifle. And it's got to be right up in your face. You can't be whacking at bears, shooting at bears, um, you know, because you're paranoid and they're 50 yards away. That, that doesn't count. They've got to be right in your face. You know, you're going to die before you can go poke them with a, a rifle here in Canada. That's just the way it is. You can't just go shoot these things. So all of a sudden, you've, you've freaked out. I don't know how close this thing is. This happens to be a, a bluff charge and you poke it with something. Now, if you don't hit it in the vitals or whatever else, in my opinion, and from some stuff I've read, is now you've turned a possible bluff charge into full on, uh, you're gonna get eaten. This thing's madder than hell. You didn't scare it, you just got it angry. So now it's changed from a bluff charge possibly to you're dead. Okay, that, that's kind of my thinking with the gun thing. You got to know what you're doing with the gun thing, but you know what? I'll, I'll get back to that gun thing in a second. So with the bear spray, uh, a buddy of mine recently was out doing some stuff in the woods and he saw this grizz, grizz charge these, these horses and wild horses. And he didn't know where, where this thing was coming from. He didn't know if it was coming at him or whatever else, but it was going for uh, uh, one, of the, one of the horses. Anyway, it got close enough that he unloaded his can of bear spray. He got freaked out. And you know what? I don't blame him. This thing is charging and he doesn't know what the hell's going on. He unloaded his can way too early. It's got to be up in your face. He unloaded his can anyway. Everything turned out okay. All is good. And, uh, you know, that was a learning curve for sure. So um, that happened. That's, that's probably not good either. But uh, you have to practice with these things. And you really have to try to hold it together if this thing's coming down on you, man. Because, uh, you know, you hear the stories and you've probably all read about them. But anyway, so that's the kind of the bear spray deal with me. Bear spray with me is is awesome way to go. The bear spray is uh, it's not a deterrent. It, well, it's a deterrent of getting eaten. It's when the shit when the stuff has gone really sideways and this thing's right, it's going to eat you. That's when the bear spray comes out. You know what? You hope you don't come into that situation. You're going to do everything you can to get away from that. You're going to you know you're going to talk talk to it you're going to kind of back off you're going to be totally submissive and do all the, the grizzly bear techniques to get out of danger you're hopefully not going to be stringing bacon up in the in your campsite you know bringing these things in and blah 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 all the bad things you can do but you can also just happen across uh in between a a, a sow and a cub or on a kill there's all kinds of uh, that action going on and then you're then you're you're toast i think another thing to use is bear bangers and bear bangers are a little bit different again this is when the shits hit the fan and it's it's on you or it's about to be on you that's this guy and now let's look at the bear bangers here we go so this you can get these in kits you can there's all kinds of options for these guys so these are the 15 millimeter pen types and there you go so basically this kit this is a brand new kit by the way it comes with six bangers. These are bangers. And these are flares, white, green, and red flares. And they launch off this pen. There is a delay on this. Um, I'm not sure what it is, one or two seconds. So this will fire off and it'll go into the air and whichever way you're pointing it. And these guys will pop. And we'll show you that in a second. So this is how you use the bear banger. Um, there's the safety. So what that does, I guess, if this is loaded, hopefully you can see that, that, you know, this can't travel or get smacked against that, it's gonna be there. Uh, again, I don't carry it like that. Uh, I'm not carrying it loaded up. To load this thing, you put it in safe, put it on safe there, you unscrew this cap, and there's like a little, it looks like a 22 
uh, blasting cap there. And then you screw it on to this guy. And I think, you know, you want to be careful, but it just screws on, pretty simple stuff. And you thread it on there until it's on. And then basically what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pull, this is a spring-loaded guy here, I should show you that. You just basic, basically pull this back, let it go. And it fires the, the uh, fair banger. So I'm going to do that here for you. So that's how that guy works. This isn't a defensive thing in my opinion. I've heard stories that some guys are carrying this thing loaded. So they're screwing on their, their giant firecracker <clears throat> on the end of this guy. <clears throat> Excuse me. And you can see this. This guy pops it. it. Just hits the pin, just hits it, and away it goes. There's your safety. Um, and I've heard guys that carry these loaded, you know, with the safety on. But I don't know, man. This thing went off in your pants. It's going to be all over. So all over in, 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 you know, I don't know what it's going to do to you. I should actually stick this in a pumpkin or something. I don't want this screwed on here and in the safe position. If I take a tumble, if I fall, if I, whatever happens here, um, and this thing goes off, I don't know. This could be, this, this could be, you know, change things into a real bad situation. So this to me isn't like you need to whip this out and blast away. That's not what that's for. Uh, to me, again, this is just my opinion is, when this guy comes out, if you've got camp set up and you've got a big Grizz cruising around your camp, checking you out, which, you know, he's just curious, whatever, um, and you can't get out of the way or change the situation by actually just leaving because you're in his backyard too, um, then this would be used. You... Um, you're going to pop this off and the thing nine times out of ten is going to run away This is also good for clearing a trail if you've got only one way down the mountain And you know what it's getting dark Wh whatever the reason is usually I would say you know sit back wait and just watch and and you know Don't stir things up. Just hopefully go around the bear do whatever you can do to so you don't have to uh, uh, You know mingle with it. So this this would be for it's just going to scare the bear away if it's hanging around your front door this is what you're going to use and again it comes with flares so if this didn't work and the bear's chewing on one of your legs you got the flares to go uh, actually hopefully that didn't happen you're going to use the flares because you got lost or whatever this is just your little uh, you know safety pack or whatever uh, survival pack so that's how I use it you guys use it however you like all right guys here we go let's check it out I've got it on about a 45 degree and let's see how she goes So it went up about, I'm going to think about 20 yards and popped. And you can of course change the angle depending on what you're doing. Um, another uh, thing I like to, to mention is, I love bushcraft, sure I love gear, there. I love shiny things as you know. But I see a lot of these bushcraft um, guys and they cook it up something man that looks like, I don't know what, a feast for a king. You know, they got bacon flying around and they got burgers and, or, or whatever, steaks. And I love that, big barbecues and stuff. But when you're, when you're actually, and I'm not talking about campgrounds or anything, I'm just talking about if you're actually hiking and you're, you know, you're in a day, uh, you know, eight hour walk into the into grizz country or whatever um, your pack is full of survival gear and obviously an extra couple of days of food if you're out for two maybe you got four days worth or whatever you're gonna do you're not dragging a wet round steaks up there you're just not you're not going to be grinding a lot of coffee up there any kind of any kind of food that's going to bring in a bear when you're alone at your campfire at night uh, steaks and all that good stuff you're not bringing it you're not dragging a steak up in the mountains in the summertime it's just not happening so that um you know you got to ask yourself what what are you doing to bring this wisest bear here okay here let's take a look at one of my options here now i am a licensed gun owner i've done a ton of um hunting i've got my i've shot idpa i've got courses under my belt i've shot lots of pistol lots of long range stuff and I, I would think over the last even 10 years, I've got 10,000 rounds downrange. So I'm not new to it. I'm, I'm not the best. I'm not, the, I'm not saying I'm, I'm the pro at it. I'm just saying I've got a ton of experience with firearms. So I got some wind, but uh, it's coming straight at me. So I don't think it's gonna make, I don't think it's gonna make a difference as far as windage, um, which of course is the biggest pain in the ass, but it's coming straight at me. So should be good.
what you're seeing here is uh, probably pretty interesting for you guys out of the US because I know you can't have these tiny shotguns. Here is a obviously a non-restricted firearm. So if you have a firearms license, you can use this thing. But this is a 12 gauge double barrel and it's a shorty. It's got a 12 inch barrel and it's got two triggers. So you can give them both trigger, both barrels if you want. But I have carried stuff like this and I'll show you my other guy here in a second. So I think if you just got your license or whatever else, I think this is probably a bad idea. Um, if you haven't practiced with something like this, a firearm, you just run out and get your license. It's, I think it's silly. I think you're going to probably hurt somebody or hurt yourself. You got to practice a ton with these things. You got to be so confident. You got to run drills. You got to do the whole thing. You can't just buy one and say, yeah, I'm good. I'm, I'm good to go. I should be fine. No, that's, that's not the way it goes. In my opinion, this is just my opinion. You've got to have tons of, tons of stuff going on. You got to run drills, reloading, bam, bam, bam. Be totally confident with this, like brushing your teeth. If you're not, I say don't carry this thing. Um, and again, you can't carry this everywhere. A, a lot of, obviously, a lot of the parks, provincial parks or whatever, you can't carry a firearm. That's it, done deal. So public land you can, and a few places you can. Um, but you have to check the laws. It's a, it's a big deal, this thing. It's dangerous, and this thing, um, you know, you hear stories too. A lot of people will use something like this when they don't need to pull the trigger yet. The bear's 25 yards away. You, you can't just be throwing lead down range at these things. They're protected, and you, you just can't do that. So I have issues with this. I've carried this, and I also have a 4570 lever gun that's just, uh, the, the round is frightening. I, I've got some hand loads that I'll show you here. It's 405 grain hot hand loads, hard cast bullet and those things will knock down trees. So here it is guys, here's the 4570 compared to uh, the 22 long rifle right there. So this is the 405 grain hard cast and these are pretty hot loads I've developed. So yeah, there you go. But again, it's, uh, it depends where you are. Everything has got its pros and cons. You know, if I'm walking through the bush and I separate, I get in between a cub and, and a sow or whatever, you know what, you, you have to have this thing in your hands ready to rock or you're toast. If you're in the bush, visibility is maybe 20 yards. You're, you're, not, you're not getting this out in time if it's over your back or if it's in a scabbard. You also got to think, if this is in a scabbard behind your back, like in a movie, and I have a scabbard for it and I've tried it, this thing is loaded. You're not, you're not going to pull this thing out of a scabbard and then load it. It's too late. You're done. It's over. So you're going to be comfortable carrying this around or another firearm with it tucked away um, you know, as you're running through the woods. So it's really something to think about it. So to make this in a really, you know, like fly fishing, the river's running, everything's noisy as hell, and the bush is all around you. There's no visibility. I'm not, unless this is in my hands, ready to go, um, it's not going to happen. You know what I mean? It's not going to, I'm not going to be able to pull this out of a sack or my pack or, what, or a sling and get this in front of me. It's not going to happen. So that's my uh, two cents on that whether you like it or not I don't know if it's different if I'm in a wide open area and um, I can see for days it's different but again where I fly fish this becomes kind of useless where I can get my bear spray on my side uh, in about two seconds like not two seconds in a second I can pull that thing out where this I'm fumbling and I don't want to walk around with this thing you know what I mean I don't want to walk around with this like this ready to go it just takes the fun out of the whole deal so i haven't been using a firearm i also have i haven't been using a firearm lately i also have this little guy it's the same size barrel and again um these have been checked this is empty um if i'm fly fishing with myself or buddy i'm just not carrying this i'm not gonna it's just a pain in the butt I'm not going to carry it. If I was on a horseback and I had this in a scabbard, I'd probably, yeah, I would probably carry it. Um, yeah, so when I'm busting through the woods, <laughs> it sounds weird, but I'm not carrying this because I don't think I can get it out in time. I don't want to hang it out front and go through there like I'm in uh, a war zone. I I'm not liking that either. So I just carry, right now, I just carry my bear spray and my bangers. So hopefully I explained that right. I don't know if I did. I'll have to think about it. But again, there's pros and cons to everything. It's got to be on you basically um, being the threat. It's not because you saw one. So there's lots of kind of weird issues with this, I think. But again, it depends on the situation and again, where you are. Visibility, uh, um, of course, 
legality what what's happening so but you know what you can take it a step further if you want just because I I have got some stuff here to show you um, you know normally you know what I would take a couple rounds in there if I was gonna if I was in a situation where I was gonna take something like that um, and you can take um, I don't know if I can find it here yeah so you know what if you you can take a couple rounds with you or you can take like a that guy here and these are kind of cool so these guys come out and you got more in here and you know what while we're at it let's take let's talk about it what I shoot if I'm in a defensive mode with a shotgun or these guys are slugs this is high brass um, these are full power you know slugs that's a slug and this is double odd bucks so these are nine pellets about 30 calibers each um, and again really close these short barrels are only good for close up their the spread pattern for buck is crazy so you, it's got to be really close and obviously they're they're short because they're compact they're easy to camp or they're easy to carry easy to pack so that's kind of that deal there or you can go full-on commando if you're into it but if you want to go full-on commando you could do something like this you know wear a chest rig uh, <laughs> I'm just kidding of course but this chest rig will hold uh, geez I can't remember I think it's about a hundred rounds and these guys are kind of cool and you just pull these cassettes out and you pull the next guy and there you go and, you, and away you go so you know what if you're if you're going to get crazy you want to carry an extra 50 pounds of ammo go right ahead but again guys i'm kind of against that whole thing i changed my my tune on that only because i've realized um actually i was i was camp not camping i was hiking uh through the bush along the side of the river with a buddy of mine and we actually i just had bear spray and we actually came across believe it or not there's like free range cows up there in full-on grizz country i don't know how many grizz eat them but anyway um and i just came this this little kind of a gully uh, beside the river you couldn't hear anything again the, the river's rushing down the mountain total visibility is crap i can see 15 feet in front of me walking through the side uh, on this trail beside the river and this giant brown thing comes busting out of there man and i thought for sure that's it it's all over it's mr grizz um, i had my bear spray out in about two seconds uh, my buddy was just to my right and it was a cow so you know that freaks when you're in grizz country it can freak you out you do get your head around it after a while it took me years and years to get my head around it um, and i'm good with it now but i wasn't in the beginning i was freaked out and paranoid that i'm going to get eaten every time i i went up into the mountains but i'm really good at it now as far as you know mentally where I fish and hike and camp, a lot of the time you, the visibility is not there to take one of those guys. Uh, it can't be at the ready when you're fly fishing, obviously, because you are fly fishing. So there's lots of different reasons why I don't um, use it 99.9% .9 of the time anymore. And I'm kind of come to terms with, uh, you know what, if I get eaten by a grizzly bear, that's way better than being in the city getting run over by a bus. Anyway, thanks for watching JMW Out. Leave some comments in the comment box below and let me know what you think. And again, I'm not um, saying what uh, what's right or wrong in your situation. It can be different where you live, what you, you know, the terrain you're in or, or whatever. Um, if you're on horseback or if you're uh, car camping, I don't know. But for what I'm doing right now, um, again, 99.9% .9 of the time, it's just a can of bear spray and some bear bangers. Anyway, thanks for watching.